outside, and that makes me sad. But you know what makes me not sad? <laughs> Root! The Underworld Expansion. Today we're going to be reviewing Root the Underworld Expansion. I'll give my thoughts and opinions on the Underworld Expansion. Yeah, it's going to be great. So let's just jump into it. Am I qualified to do this review? <laughs> yes! I am qualified to do this review. Root the Underworld Expansion is an expansion for the game Root. Root is an asymmetrical board game for two to six players with the expansions. Basically, the expansion adds two new game maps. You have the mountain side and the lake side. It adds two new factions, the Corvid Conspiracy and the Underground Duchy. I have played the Underworld expansion. Uh, me and my friends played it the other night. And if you don't know how to play it, I recommend learning how to play before you watch this video because I'm just going to be talking about it and reviewing it, uh, not really explaining how to play it. So that's just a quick disclaimer. Let's get into the review. <clears throat> First, let's talk about the Underground Duchy. The Underground Duchy is a larger, more powerful faction similar to the Marquis or the Erie Dynasty. In fact, the Underground Duchy has a reach score of 8, second only to the Marquis with a reach score of 10. This means they're great to put in any game if you need to up your reach to make it a more balanced game. That's one thing I liked about this expansion, how the Underground Duchy is a, a more powerful action, whereas in the Riverfolk expansion, uh, the Lizard Cult and the Riverfolk Company did not have as high of a reach as the Underground Duchy, and thus it was hard to put them into other games without also adding the Marquee. Now you can replace the Marquee or the Eerie with the Underground Duchy and games will be more well-rounded and more of a fun experience for all the players. How does the Underground Duchy score victory points? The main way the Duchy scores victory points is by using the action of their highest swayed ministers. Two of the highest ministers or lords can score you one victory point per turn. The highest lord can score you two victory points per turn. This means that each turn you can score up to four victory points and then some, depending on the other actions you take during your turn. You also get victory points every time you sway a minister. So the duchy has a pretty straightforward way of scoring victory points. That won't be hindered too much by the other players. I personally like this method of scoring victory points. It's not my favorite method and it's not as easy to score victory points as it is for the Marquis and the Woodland Alliance. I feel like four cards for a high noble that'll only score you one victory point per turn is a little much. However, I think that the fact you only have to reveal them and not spin the cards makes up for that. So that is a good compensation. The way the Underground Duchy takes their main actions is there is a separate burrow off of the map. This burrow can store duchy warriors until the player is ready to use them. I think this is a really cool feature to have, you know, because it's like an underground bunker or secret lair that I think adds a really cool feel. Because, you know, all these people are having their wars out on the map, but the underground duchy dudes are just safe in their little burrow. They're like, you can't catch me. And then whenever you put a tunnel out on the map and your moles pop out and engage in a insane battle. Why are they standing on their heads? I think that whole concept of just popping out of the ground is really cool, and I think that Leader Games captured that really well. I didn't like the fact that the two main buildings of the duchy, the Citadel and the Market, don't really have a whole lot of meaning. I mean, why did they have to have two different buildings in the first place? I understand that different lords and nobles will have like different special abilities for them, but uh, none of them really have any crafting abilities. Um, like they both will craft. It's not like one specific thing is your crafting building and that would be a incentive to get it on the board. Um, so yeah, I didn't really like that the buildings didn't have much significance. Overall, I think the Underground Duchy was a good addition. I like the fact that Leader Games decided to add another more powerful faction to Root to kind of even it out with the little smaller factions that make it hard to play a game with a lot of people if everyone just plays a tiny faction. So that was a good move there. I don't think you should 
let a first time player play this faction. We tried that a couple of nights ago. Um, my friend, he just really wanted to play these guys. And I'm not sure if he fully grasped um, like what was going on, you know. Learning Root is a giant task all on its own and having to learn a whole new faction that's not super complicated, but it's not easy to comprehend. I, I recommend the Marquee for new players uh, like everyone else would suggest. And that's the Underground Duchy. Let's talk about the Corvid Conspiracy, shall we? Hey guys, thanks for watching up to this point. If you haven't clicked subscribe, go ahead and click that subscribe button. Also, if you haven't slapped that like, slap that like now. Or the board game police will come and get you. Now let's talk about the Corvid Conspiracy. I like these guys. They're mischievous little stinkers. The Corvid Conspiracy acts like, I hate to say it, the terrorists of the root board game. They go around and place traps, bombs, and other sorts of things to foil with the other players' plans. You may think you have your plan all worked out when all of a sudden the Corvid Conspiracy flips over one of their feather tokens and, and boom, boom, all of your hard work and soldiers completely obliterated from that clearing. But for the person playing the Corvid Conspiracy, that's so freaking fun. Whenever you just get to place down that bomb, no one realizes it's a bomb. <laughs> just get to explode everything. The main way the Corvid Conspiracy scores victory points is by placing and flipping plot tokens. Now there are four different plot tokens and each of those plot tokens does a different thing. There is a bomb plot token. When you flip a bomb token, all enemy pieces are removed from the clearing. There is a snare plot token. When a snare plot token is flipped, enemy pieces cannot be moved to or from that clearing. There is an extortion plot token that when flipped allows you to steal a random card from each player with a presence in the clearing of the same plot token. And it also allows you to draw an extra card in your evening phase. Then there is the raid plot token. When you remove a raid plot token, you get to place one of your warriors in each adjacent clearing to the clearing with this token. However, there's a catch. A catch? What kind of catch? You just didn't think you could place bombs and blow things up without anyone stopping you, could you? <laughs> On their turn, a player has a chance to remove your treacherous plot tokens. Anytime during their turn, an enemy player who has enemy pieces in the same clearing with a face down plot token can reveal a card matching the clearing they are in, and then they can take a shot at guessing what that plot token is. If they are correct, the plot token is removed and placed back in your supply. If they are incorrect, you get to take that card and the plot token stays. And that's basically the Corvid Conspiracy. So I love the Corvid Conspiracy. I played these guys uh, the last time we played Root the Underworld expansion, and they were so fun. It's so satisfying to have no one guess what your uh, plot token is, and then flipping it over and having everyone just get their minds blown at your superior strategy see all their pieces removed with a single darn token that they just couldn't guess correctly. There's not a whole lot I was unhappy with with the Corvid Conspiracy. All of the mechanics work great, and I feel like they would do good in any combination of factions. Um, I feel like they do better in a combination with the more powerful factions like the Marquis and the Underground Duchy, only because uh, they can just pop up and blow stuff up, and it's gonna take some more powerful factions to suppress that. The Corvid Conspiracy only has a reach of three, so make sure to throw in some higher reaching factions when you play. I think you could give the Corvid Conspiracy to a new player, the complexity is low, and it's not too hard to understand, you know, you place tokens, if nobody guesses what they are, you get to blow stuff up, and uh, yeah, it's pretty fun. So that's the Corvid Conspiracy. Now let's talk about the lake map and the mountain map. The cool thing about the lake map is it adds, well, the lake. On the lake, there is a little raft. Let's call him Billy. Billy the Raft. 
On your turn, if you're in the same clearing as the clearing with the raft, you can hop on that raft, taking a move action, and move to any clearing on the lake. Once you move to that clearing, you may disembark and draw one card. The next player who uses the raft must board from the same clearing. I don't know if they needed an entire new board dedicated to the lake map, because I feel like that's not a super big addition to the game. Just having a, a little raft that takes you places, that's essentially what we have the Riverfolk Company for. The Riverfolk Company, you can hire their services to use the river as a raft. And I, I think that's more fun for the other players to be like, oh, it's too expensive to use it right now. Um, and also that's another point. I think if you play with the Riverfolk expansion um, and you play the Riverfolk Company, they won't be as useful on this map. In fact, I don't even know if you could play with them at all. So this map completely eliminated a faction that you could have played with and had fun with. So I was kind of disappointed about that. However, I feel like the mountain map adds a good amount of new elements without becoming too overwhelming. The mountain map adds the central clearing with the tower. If you control the tower at the end of your turn, you score an extra victory point. The mountain also adds these passages, which you cover by these tiles. On your turn, you have the option to remove these tiles, which allows you to now use these passages. I think that's a really cool, fun way to add some things to root, uh, just to shake things up a little bit. I like how they still kept the river, so that way the River Folk Company can still play on this map. And it's kind of weird that the lake map, which is like the most watery, I guess, most aquatic map, would not have a place for the River Folk Company. However, the mountain map, which is, uh, would you ever find beavers in the mountains? I don't know, probably not the peaks of the mountains, but uh, the beavers have a home here. Did I say beaver? Gosh dang it, I meant to say otters. But I think it is interesting that they put a river on the mountain map so the otters can have more of a play in the game. So overall, I like the mountain map better than the lake map. I think it's a better addition and a more well done map. And that's my review of Root the Underworld Expansion. If you guys liked this video, make sure to click that like. Every like helps. And if you want more board game content, then why not subscribe to the Quirky Quint channel as there will be more board game content every Friday. So come back next Friday for more board game content and also check out my videos on Board Game Geek as well. As always, a quick reminder that I do have Tidal Blades Heroes of the Reef Deluxe Edition coming hopefully this summer. I know that's a long time to wait, but I will be doing an extremely epic unboxing video and all sorts of videos on that game. So I'm super stoked about finally getting that game in. If you guys had a question about anything or if I gave some wrong piece of information, feel free to comment down in the comments because yeah, I might've said something wrong. That's it for now. As always, keep it quirky. Peace out. Mischievous, mischief, mischief. That's the only adjective that's coming to my mind right now. At your superior strategy, a strategizing and have their minds numbed by your bad pronunciation skills.